Russia's coalition with numerous Middle Eastern Islamic nations. How did the obscure Hebrew prophet Ezekiel know some 2,500 years ago that Israel would be back in their God-protected homeland and be opposed by hostile neighbors all around? How did he know these nations would all be driven by a very abnormal hatred and determination to exterminate Israel? We read and hear about this opposition and hatred every day in the news. Only God could have foreseen what would happen. In Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, we read this. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Truly there is no other. Only God could declare the end from the beginning and write history in advance. Only He can predict the future and have it come to pass. This proves not only that the Bible was divinely inspired, but also that He alone is the living God. With regard to Russia's invasion of Israel, note when this is to take place and where it will take place. After listing the names of the nations that will come against Israel with warlike ornaments, Ezekiel says, Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations. Now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Ezekiel 38, 7-9 Note some of the specifics here. In the latter years, on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate, and now all of them dwell safely, which in other translations speaks of unwalled cities. How did the prophet know these conditions would exist? He didn't, not on his own. God revealed it to him through the prophecy, and today we see these circumstances in place. There is far too much accurate detail for this to be merely coincidental. Again, only God can inspire his prophets to write history in advance and have it actually happen. Not since the evil regime of Adolf Hitler, during which six million or more European Jews were mass murdered, has there appeared a more satanically inspired group of enemies of Israel than the current Islamic terrorists. And this is exacerbated all the more by the fact that Israel, a small nation, is surrounded by numerous enemy nations. Ezekiel 38 tells us there is coming a time when the enemies will attack Israel. Quote, Thus says the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages to take plunder and to take booty. In March of 2011, scientists found the second largest source of oil shell in the world in Israel. This could very well be part of the plunder and booty sought by Israel's enemies in Ezekiel 38 verse 12. This would give Russia and its Middle Eastern allies a reason to go after Israel for the oil shell deposits would be a tremendous economic prize for the terrorists of the world. This is yet another indication that we are likely drawing near to the time of the end. Scripture tells us that the battle between God and Satan's inspired enemies will be won not by human allies, but by God himself. Look at Ezekiel 38, 18-22. It will come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the fields, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountain shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, 
and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Obviously, this coming battle will be won by God himself, for only God can send a worldwide earthquake that levels mountains everywhere. This may well be the most electrifying manifestation of the existence of God Almighty since the worldwide flood in the days of Noah, a global event that changed the world forever. There are plenty of people who doubt that the end time prophecies in scripture will ever take place. Their skepticism is a confirmation of Bible prophecy as well, for Peter gave us this warning, quote, This they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by that same word, are reserved for the fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. When God destroys Russia on the mountains of Israel. Israel's very existence today, given the fact the nation is surrounded by hostile enemies, can only be attributed to the protective hand of God in fulfillment of his promise in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Israel has been supernaturally preserved multiple times when attacked by large, well-equipped armies. Yet after more than 60 years, they still occupy their land in troubled times, just as the prophets predicted. Many people argue that Russia continues to show signs of both resistance and strength in its efforts to reestablish this Soviet Union. And given Russia's relationship with the hostile Arab neighbors surrounding Israel, which includes Iran, with its ongoing nuclear development, we are seeing things come together in a way that appears to indicate we're coming closer to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. However, we have no reason to fear, for Bible prophecy also foretells God will not allow Israel to be destroyed again. He has promised to save Israel and destroy the invading enemies on the mountains of Israel. Why? So all the world will know that he is God. This future divine intervention by God is far more than just saving Israel, though this is very important. It is also to, once for all, just before the end times begin, demonstrate to a skeptical world that there is indeed a God in heaven who is all-powerful and in control of all that happens on earth. Why will this take place? There are eight statements in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 that explain the reason for God's planned destruction of Russia and its allies. Consider the following carefully. Ezekiel 38, 16. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog before their eyes. 38 verse 23, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. 39 verse 6, I will send fire on Magog, on those who live in security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. 39 verse 7, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. 39 verse 22, The house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. 39 verse 27, When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am hallowed in them in the sight of many nations. 39 verse 28, then they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, who sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer. There is no question that when Russia and her allies come down against little Israel to wipe her out, God will both rescue her supernaturally and also prove that he alone is the Lord God of the universe. In fact, in the scriptures above, he singles out four groups mainly atheists and those who forget or reject God. 
He is the creator of all things, as well as the sustainer of our present world. He repeatedly cites, the nations may know, or they shall know. In Ezekiel 39, 6-7, God said, I will send fire on Magog, and on those who live in security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, so I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Insecurity in the coastlands suggests God will defeat even the secret terrorists who come against Israel. He will protect Israel from even clandestine efforts against it. God's intervention will save Israel and rescue it from every possible attempt made against it. In light of the fact God will make himself obvious and that the nations will know it is he who is protecting Israel, no one will be without excuse when it comes time to give an account to God. Those who are not believers and who reject Jesus as the Savior will have seen God's supernatural hand of intervention at work. They will know the preservation of Israel as an act of God. Tragically, as Bible prophecy clearly indicates, there will be many who willfully reject him and do not surrender their lives to him. That will be a dreadful mistake for those individuals, for their decision will prohibit them from experiencing the wonderful blessings God has in store during both the thousand-year kingdom of peace and eternity.